Hey, welcome to the table. We're so excited to have you join us for another episode. This podcast, really our heart and our commitment is to just continue to equip disciples of Jesus for this cultural moment. And we love doing that just through conversations around the table about spiritual gifts and, and culture and, and church history and what the Bible has to say about things that we're wrestling with today. So we're glad you're joining. If you're new, hit that subscribe button, be a part of the journey with us. And we would love a rating and review as well. That just means the world to us and helps the, the podcast podcast go out further and then let me just say if this conversation is beneficial for you I think it would be a good one to share with a friend and continue the conversation uh, with with someone else around your table and that's what this uh, podcast is really all about my name is Khalil my name is Sean and uh, we are the hosts of the welcome to the table podcast and it's a pleasure to be hanging with you and we do have a guest with us and this is a repeat guest our buddy Jeff Gowing Jeff say hi real quick What's up, everybody? <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're just honored to have him. Jeff is such a good thinker. He's a good friend, like someone I've continued to get to know better and better. And the more I get to know Jeff, the more I realize, man, he's really thinking critically about good questions about faith and life and how to live as genuine followers of Jesus. And we just need more of that. So, Jeff, I'm excited to have you on and, and to begin to have this conversation Love to with be you. here. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about yourself. I almost, I almost told um, your story, but, you know, uh, wife, kids... Uh, where are you at in Oregon? And uh, yeah, just to get everybody kind of up to date. So I'm a native Oregonian. I've uh, yeah. been born and raised in this beautiful state. If you haven't been here, you should definitely come check it out. Yeah. Uh, not in the wintertime. You'll <laughs> hate it. I think it's the most depressing place on earth. But um, <laughs> I, uh, I serve as a student pastor at a church in Florence, Oregon, which is about an hour west of Eugene, Oregon, if you're familiar with um, the Oregon Ducks. And mm-hmm. uh, my wife and I, have been married almost nine years, and we have a four-year-old daughter named Lainey who is um, just just passionate and, and full of life, and um, yeah, so that's what that's who I am. That's, that's what I'm about. It's fun too because um, you are somebody that uh, not only are you a young pastor, but you've worked with children, you've worked with youth, you've worked with uh, older congregation, uh, you've worked with younger con- a younger congregation, and mixture. So you have this really like breadth of ministry experience for a young guy and you have a young family. And so it's fun because we have, um, that type of, um, of viewership, if you will, or yeah. listenership, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so, um, that's, that's one of the reasons why we always are grateful to have someone like you on the, on the podcast, who's an everyday follower of Jesus that has a young family, but also ministers to those who are, uh, older in age and younger in age and everything in between. And so, um, always cool to have you on, dude. And uh, we we both, yeah, consider you a good friend. Yeah, awesome. I think the last time you were on, you was was it the flip the mic? Was it the flip oh, the mic? Oh yeah, where you maybe asked that was us about. Um, you asked us about uh, lament. Yeah, which was awesome. And so I love that. Totally, totally, just off the cuff a little bit, thinking through you know our understanding of scripture. And so we thought it'd be cool to just kind of you know, flip the mic back on you, but just say, Hey, you know, I know you're always thinking about life and faith and trying to grow with Jesus. Like what's something you are really, really thinking through, really wrestling with right now that we could maybe work through together on the table. I think something that that's been on my heart recently is the power of community and confession. Um, Mm. as, as a pastor, it's been really discouraging to see a lot of high profile leaders and Mm. followers of Jesus have moral failures and struggles. And I, and I just, the question that, that I was struck by is what would happen, uh, what happened to, to make them fall down this slippery slope and where could they have acknowledged sin Mm -hmm. uh, and and confess? And so I just, I, I've been trying to really in my own life as a rhythm, just confess the small stuff before it become, can become big stuff, but also pondering how, we, we've forgotten this uh, this formation um, in in a lot of evangelical churches in America, mm-hmm. especially here in the West. And um, so, how can we put value back in confession? How do we do it the mm-hmm. right way in a way that honors God, but also um, protects us and, and strengthens us? Yeah, no, that's that's great. For, you know, for for as we're jumping in, would you mind kind of unpacking a little bit of what you mean when we you talk about confession? 
Yeah. Uh, so I think that confession is, is twofold. I think there's confessing to God. Um, mm-hmm. and, and we see that modeled in, in David's life through, throughout the Bible. We see it modeled in so many different ways. But uh, Psalm 32 comes to mind where David uh, talks about um, sin in a powerful way. And in Psalm 32, 3, he says, For when I kept silent about his sin, um, my bones wasted away. Mm-hmm. Though my through my groaning all day long, for day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was dried up as by the heat of the summer. And in verse five, he says, "I acknowledge my sin to you." He's talking to God, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, "I will confess my transgressions to the Lord," and you forgave my iniquity and my sin. And so there's the there's the the beauty of confessing our sin to God. And so obviously that's the place where forgiveness happens through confession, through repentance is, is saying this isn't right. Mm. This isn't, um, this isn't from you. This Mm. doesn't look like you, Jesus, uh, forgive me. But then there's the, also a a piece of confession that, that brings truth in a powerful way of bringing things that are hidden into the light. Mm. And, and it's extremely humbling, uh, but powerful. And I, um, I think the uh, another place where this looks uh, where this is brought to to mind is in James five. Um, let me get there real quick. Or Sean, do you already have James five open? I've got it open. Cool. Go ahead and I got to find the verse though. <laughs> right. Hmm. Well, as you guys are finding it, you know, you just said it. There's <laughs> humility and humbling. There's something about confession that is acknowledging our fault yeah acknowledging something that's wrong and and coming before god and others which is not easy yeah because i'm saying i'm wrong i'm wrong about something i'm wrong before you or i've wronged you uh i've wronged god you know i i've messed up and um it's not to can be condemned or be devalued but to just acknowledge hey we're broken people and we need, there's this being real and authentic before and needing to receive the grace of other people and receive the grace of God. And, um, I just, I definitely know it's, it's a humbling process. Like as we dive into this conversation, I'm thinking, okay, we're talking about humility or we're talking about confession. This is one of the hardest, hardest Christian disciplines. Yeah. Um, and we'll probably talk about it more, but something I definitely think is neglected. So it's, Absolutely. it's a good conversation, man. What's that scripture that we're looking at? It's, uh, uh, verse 16, James chapter 5, verse 16, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Mm. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. It's uh, There's a lot of interesting imagery right there that in order for healing to take place, confession has to take place, yeah. which confession and vulnerability go hand in hand. You yeah. can't have one without the other. You can't not be vulnerable and confess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was going to say confession and humility and even humility mm-hmm. as well. Well, and that's another piece of that to be vulnerable. You have to be humble. Mm-hmm. You have to, you have to recognize that, um, I don't, I, I'm not here to within community. I'm not here to hide. I'm not here to, it's not about, uh, me. It's about the mission of Jesus and part of the mission of Jesus means we need to be a people that confesses really well because culturally, I don't know. I'll throw it up to you, Jeff. Do we do this well within our culture? I don't. I don't think so. I think this is one of the, we we are uh, we are a people that likes to show our highlight reels. Mm-hmm. We're a yeah. people that likes to uh, perform and even pretend that we've yeah. got it all together. Um, and and so we see a lot of it where it's the. We want to put our best self forward and anything else that, that is real or that is fake, like in mm. cancel culture. Mm-hmm. Um, if I, if I admit like so many celebrities you see, like that are about to be canceled, they'll apologize, but their, their apology doesn't really matter. Yeah. Right. There's still, the result is going to happen. So why in a culture like that, would I, would I be transparent that, that I've got something going on in my life when there's the opportunity to be canceled. And so I think as the church, like that's kind of, um, as followers of Jesus, that's affected us. We're carrying that. We're like, oh, I can't, I can't share that because it, maybe there's this fear that I'll be canceled. Like, mm-hmm. sure, I can go to God, but I really don't have the the power of 
accountability or even the power to strip sin of its power just to say, to, again, in humility, um, right. that, that when we, we confess like, man, I'm struggling with, with it just being so critical or I'm struggling with insecurity in, in a major way that's causing me to, to be deceitful in my mm-hmm. life or yeah. like those are extremely hollowing conversations yeah. that is like, but it exposes it. And it gives us strength to walk beyond it. But I, uh, to, to come back to the original question, I don't think I see this well in our culture a, at all yeah. um, played out. Yeah. And I think you touched on something really important here is uh, cancel culture. Mm-hmm. I don't think we can have confessional community if cancel culture is our norm. We, we, need to, we need to put that down. We need to crucify cancel culture in the church and, and allow for vulnerability. Because what happens, like you said, is... It, it, I can't be vulnerable. I can't admit my faults or my wrongs or how I've fallen short or how I've messed up. If there's a chance that I'm going to get canceled, I'm going to get excommunicated. I'm, th- th- these people that are my friends or this is my community. If I don't know that I can come out and say, here is my mess and I'm going to be received and people are going to walk with me and help me, then I'm not, I'm not going to say it. And, and cancel culture says, cancel culture says, if you say the wrong thing, you're done. Right. That's it. That's the end for you. And that doesn't provide room for confession. And that scripture, we confess to be healed. Yeah. We yeah. confess so right. that we can be healed. So what that acknowledges is we're broken, we're hurting, we're in pain, we're, we're needing this healing, we're needing people we can come to, and we're looking out and we're saying, but I can't because I'm not going to be healed. I'm actually going to be damaged more. I'm going to reject or totally reject labeled or categorized or whatever. Yeah. So, so cancel culture is going to cancel confession and, and we need to, we need to put that down so that we can create a space. And that's the question you're asking. How do we cultivate a confessional community? Because we need that healing. We need restoration to one another and to God. Um, But if we are people and this is an individual, like check your heart if you're saying I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm ready to cancel, um, we're we're being we're being a barrier to someone else's healing. Yeah, right. I think like confession can work in in a number of ways. One to God, like we talked about Psalm Psalm 32, to one another. But we also go to who we we, we confess to who we've wronged mm-hmm. as well. So right. that's a way of confession that can come out. But I think there's also ways to cultivate this in a, in a very um, in a very powerful way of linking arms with one another. Um, but that takes us acknowledging that we are, we are still an imperfect and messy people in need of grace. And mm-hmm. I was reading recently in uh, Paul David Tripp's book, lead uh, 12 gospel principles for leading in church. And he says this, a gospel shaped leadership community will be a confessional community where leader honesty is not only a constant protection, but encourages a deeper and deeper dependency on God. Confessing communities tend to be humble communities. Confessing t- communities tend to be worshiping communities. Confessing communities tend to be praying communities. Leaders who confess tend to be tender and kind when people they are called to lead mess up and need to confess. And so um, it just reminds us, I, you know, immediately as I'm reading that, I, I'm, I'm reminded of the parable of Jesus. And this is off the cuff, so I'm forgive me for not knowing the reference where he's talking about the man's debt that was forgiven mm, right and, and by the king and then immediately the man went out and demanded that someone that owed him money a smaller amount mm. pay and 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 how many times we do that where we can't have that heart of of I can confess or I can be absolved or I can be forgiven of sin but then I'm going to go hold this over someone else's head and and right. so um those are just some thoughts that that are bouncing around my brain, and and I think you're you're right on, Cleo, that we we need to drop a cancel culture and develop a confessing culture. Yeah. Well, and I would that's so good, and I would add to Paul David Tripp there that a couple of thoughts that a confessing community is also a grace filled community, mm-hmm. um, which is very messy, and the word community is important that confession is communal as well as it is personal yeah which is at the at the root part of the roots of christianity 
that it's not just personal. We serve a personal God, mm. three in one, uh, but we also serve a God who is communal, three in one, <laughs> and has that. And you see remnants of that throughout church history, but specifically even with the with the Israelites. You know, when they come back from exile, Ezra and Nehemiah rebuild the walls. Ezra is the theologian, if you will, <laughs> and uh, Nehemiah is the uh, layperson. And you get this really beautiful marriage here. Well, Ezra actually calls the uh, the Israelites to fasting and prayer. He calls them, we'll, we'll probably do a podcast on that but at some point. But, um, you know, he also calls them to repentance and confession and confession. And so it says in Ezra chapter 10, while Ezra prayed and made confession, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, a very great assembly of men, women, and children gathered to him out of Israel, for the people wept bitterly for their sin they had forgotten. He opened, he looked at the history of his people, and he didn't know. And I'm I'm kind of reading into this a little bit, but um that there the the reason for exile, the reason we went into this is our sinfulness. So we have not only sinned. We must first understand we've sinned against our creator, whether we recognize it or not. If you're a follower of Jesus or not, we have sinned against the the character of our creator, who who he is and who he's created this world and uh, and humanity to be. And so that's where confession has to start. It's like, you know what? I've messed up and I need to make it right with creator God and with those I have messed up against. And so... Um, but I love that. I'm sorry I'm getting off on a tangent here, but I love that um, that that line that we need to um, steer clear of cancel culture into confessing culture because mm-hmm. that's where healing happens. I love what you're saying too is, is because it, it really paints the idea that in um, gospel-centered community that confession and repentance can be contagious. Like what, what yeah. Ezra did right there is of... of yeah. He set the tone of man, I've wronged it, and Israel followed suit. And so, I think as as individuals and as followers of Christ, I think we need to set the tone and bring this back to back to the cross and back to one another to say, "Help, we we need to do this together." Yeah, and that's spiritual leadership on on Ezra's part. You know, as leaders or as, as individuals, even we we can help set the tone. And what we're talking about is creating culture. And that comes back to, you know, you, you will either have cancel culture, which fosters fear, or you'll have a confessional culture, which fosters healing, fosters grace, restoration. Um, and so as we're thinking of, you're talking, Sean, about communal, it's all, we're talking about the culture of our community. Right. And, and that comes from the heart. And like you said, Back, coming back to the cross, we remembering the cross, remembering what was done for us, remembering our own brokenness and sinfulness and God's incredible grace with us. And then our response as an overflow of that is grace for one another. Yeah. So that when I hear, when you, when you have the courage to come to me and say, hey, I messed up, I'm not canceling you. I'm, I'm coming in and walking with you and going, wow, now may God's grace come from me to you and say, Thank you for thank you for coming to me. I, I forgive you. How let let's he, walk in healing together, move forward together, pursuing unity together, uh, and vice versa. If I know something that I did something to you, I need to come to you. Yeah, and and, and that's that's good, man. Um, Establishing cultures that that are safe but not soft. And I think like sin is serious, mm-hmm. and um, so I, I don't want to communicate that we, we take sin lightly. Um, we don't. But um, we need to create spaces where we can bring things that are in the dark into the light, that we may be healed. We need to confess to one another that, that we can walk through this. And some, sometimes that's going to take a longer walk than, than other things. But we're all in the process of saying, man, we, we want the gospel, a passion for the gospel to grow mm-hmm. And the grip of sin to be loosened on our lives. And to grow in Christ-likeness. That's the ultimate goal. Yep. To be like Jesus. And God is doing that in our hearts, and he's doing it through confession. So can I just ask you guys, what are maybe a couple 
just to clarify how we should respond, what are a couple broad categories for confession? Like, are we just talking about, like, I stole from you, you know, and I need to confess that I stole something? Or are we talking about something in the heart? Like, what are some of the categories that we can kind of think of together for people right now so they can think, you know, man, this is, these are areas that maybe I should be confessing for. I think one that comes to, to mind that is easy to miss is the motivations of our heart. Mm. We can do the right thing on the outside with the wrong heart internally. And so to ask God, again, taking the words of David of search my heart and know me, God. Search my heart and know me, like reveal to me any, any wayward thought or direction that's not of you. And so I think that that's an area of confession, of motivation. Man, how many times do I confess to the community I'm a part of, man, I just, I'm, I'm, I repented to God, but I just, I'm sorry guys like this. Can you, can you ask me about this? I had the wrong motivation of, of serving, uh, in elementary kids church this week. Mm -hmm. I, I was so grumpy. It was, it was not a labor. It wasn't out of love. It was like, ah, I'm mm -hmm. just giving that example. I, I love yeah. kids, but <laughs> that's I think, Psalm 139, 23 and 24, by the way. Mm -hmm fantastic song it's it's a prayer that all of us should personalize and, and be praying Maybe, regularly i would say probably before your before your feet hit the ground that that would be a prayer that you make that in uh um psalm um 19 14 is another uh possibly a good one too mm. but um yeah, that's a good one. let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be, be pleasing, pleasing in your sight. to in your sight to you oh god my lord and my refuge mm -hmm. um you know, some of those things that it regularly prays just to get really practical. I know we're kind of deviating from the categorical question, That's but so um, to get practical, I think the, the motivation where we start out, like, why do I confess? Cause at the end of the day, it's like, well, why do I do this? Yeah. Or like, what's the point? Well, we do it because we love Jesus and we want to be the person that he has called us to be in order to do that. We have to look at his life and the fact of the matter is Jesus was very vulnerable he was open. Um, he was sinless. Absolutely. We believe that. Um, we believe um, that he was perfect in that, in the sense that, that he was sinless. But, um, you know, we have to attack that why. And it's just an every day as I'm walking, you know, if you're somebody who is uh, a, just an, an, an everyday follower who attends church who is serving or, uh, you know, you've got kids, maybe you don't, maybe you're a young adult, maybe you're even, um, somebody who's retired that's listening. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, how can I practice vulnerability in a humble way, not in airing all my dirty laundry all the time to people, but is there somebody that I can confess to? Is there a group of people I can confess to? Uh, when I mess up or when something like is wayward within my heart, within my mind, within my actions, um, you know, for me, it's with my kids and my wife, you know, it's, uh, there's just no secrets, mm -hmm. you know? And if I mess up with my kids, I get down on their level and I, and I confess that and I ask for forgiveness. Um, but even it's, it's not even, doesn't have to even be the category of like these glaring sins. It's, I want to in my home. Um, with my roommates, with my spouse, with my friends, um, uh, within my small group at church, within my team that I'm a part of, that I get to either lead or be a part of leading. Um, oh, it's with my buddies. I want to be honest and vulnerable and it can be even a man I'm struggling with this or man. I just need to process this with you. And that kind of can be a starting point. And back to that James scripture, when we confess, we allow the Holy Spirit to do a healing work upon that area of our heart. And mm -hmm. there's, there's, a, there's a prison for us if we don't. Because if I won't confess, I don't invite the Holy Spirit's healing on that area of my heart that needs healing. He needs transformation. If I'm angry and I'm just thinking thoughts about people, confessing it to the people I'm thinking it allows that area of my heart to experience the healing power of the Holy Spirit and to be renewed. Absolutely. And I think, I think there's something powerful about confessing as well is because, um, when we're, we're just confessing to God, yes, sin is forgiven, mm. but it doesn't, if there's a stronghold in my life of sin, where in, in essence, I believed lies or I'm practicing in behaviors that I, that do not align with the heart 
um, an image of Christ. If if I'm just doing it by myself, then the enemy has entrenched defense there. Mm. Sin has an entrenched defense there. So I will continually be pulled in the wrong direction. However, when I confess, it's like I'm bringing in reinforcements to tear that down and to uproot that 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 struggle, that stronghold. And so um, it, it just brings other people to say, hey, I alone by myself do not have enough to, to uproot this and, and, and in partnership so with the Holy Spirit and with brothers and sisters in gospel community, I can begin to see breakthrough in my life in a powerful way. I liken it to uh, the imagery is a dark room and maybe it's a gymnasium that has multiple light switches, but confession maybe it's the starting point and you flip one or two on and the bulbs have to really like they have to kind of warm up yeah, if you're in one of those big sounds man yeah that's a <laughs> yeah. and it just kind of like it starts to warm up a little bit and and you see the darkness begin to dissipate it could be that it could be even a smaller room where you know uh you flip a light switch on me there's only one or two light switches and it's just boom all of a sudden like i wake up in the morning and i go into my bathroom to brush my teeth because you know i got that morning breath i got to get rid of i got to get rid of it mm-hmm. but i sl- i flip on that light and it's like boom it's powerful so there's these stages potentially there's this hey i, I maybe you're somebody who 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 likes the is you know relates to the the cancel culture or the filter culture or the um, highlight culture and you just need to flip on a light that starts to warm up because you're just not too sure. You just got to get your toe kind of in the, in the, um, in the ocean a little bit, or maybe you're that person. that's like, no, I just, I feel like I've got to let this go. So you've got some trusted friends, you know, maybe you're struggling with something that's really deep and you're yeah. broken and you have a counselor that you need to go to. Um, that's why, I mean, counseling is huge. You know, it's huge. And maybe that's a beginning point for you, but that's like a, that's like a smaller room light switch light bulb moment where it just sheds a ton of light on it. And then you're able to go from there. Um, but I, I just like that image of turning light on in the darkness that, that light is, um, invited into the darker recesses of our souls Mm -hmm. so that healing can take place by the spirit, by the power of the spirit. Yeah, that's so great. Um, man, that's so that's so powerful as we're talking about culture in our world today does not do this, but we are the people of the Spirit called to be different, and it all is part of Christ's mission to create reconciliation and restoration and a new creation and healing and forgiveness and new life and a, and a Spirit-empowered community. And this is, I think this is where it, it, it really is starts Mm -hmm. i mean this is the way that god's people are so different than the world and it's only possible through submission to christ yeah it's it's totally different so um practically speaking we've touched on some things but back back to your question jeff how how do we create confessional community how do we start to do this practically i think a small way um would be as a community to to pray this might go back to uh joel's episode pray Mm, pray yeah yeah pray the lord's prayer um uh multiple times a day and in community talk about man what are some sins that that i'm noticing in my life today and how can i confess those before bed um as a family we we pray that prayer with my daughter and, and and before we pray it i ask what are we, what's something we want to give praise to God for today that's happened in our story? And what's, what's an area or multiple areas where we recognize sin in our lives that we need to surrender to Jesus mm. and, and to support one another. And so that's a small way to do it. Another way um, would, would just be looking at James, um, James, James five sixteen of confessing mm. and then praying. So who am I asking to pray who, how am I confessing to God, confessing one another and and asking for prayer in a certain area? And who am I praying for? Mm. Who am I praying for daily to say, man, God be with my friend who's struggling with this. God, may you receive the glory through breakthrough. May they uh, be conformed to your image more and more. And so just making that a daily practice or a weekly practice of saying, how can I pray for you in our community? What is something you're struggling with it? That, um, that's, that's apparent and just being really real. uh, I think, 
I forget who said it, so whatever, but there's the rule of seconds. If we'll go first, mm-hmm. yeah. then right. someone can go second. That's that contagious piece that you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, if it's we'll go contagious. first. So how can it's you Ezra go first? leading the way. Mm-hmm. How can so, you go first and, and, and then invite someone? Like, it just opens the door for someone to go second in that, so... You talk about asking questions, and I think that's a great starting place. I mean, those questions are very important. So, you know, a challenge to all of those who are listening, what are some questions you can ask people? Um, to give another example, I ask my sons every time we, well, my, my middle son, my middle child, uh, he's still a little too young, but um, my oldest, Micah, every time we do guy time, we do it once a week uh, pretty re- regularly say, do you have any questions about Jesus? Number two is, are we good? Are we good? Are you and I okay? Like, are you holding anything against me? Or am I holding anything against you? And then I ask, have I been too hard or harsh with you recently? Because my tendency is not to drift into um, into soft or sensitive, because I'm not. My tendency is to drift into hard and harsh, and so I always want to make sure my boys know that I'm, yes, I'm tough, but I'm tender too. I want to be tender as well. So those are the three questions and it always leads to confession. Mm-hmm. Um, then my wife and I have, uh, our Sunday night meetings every Sunday night, obviously, um, we have, um, uh, a question that's similar to that as well. Have I hurt you in any way this week is the question. So incorporate some of those things and those are hard questions not because easy. they require you you need to be ready to receive an answer that you may not like and you you're oh, not yeah. you're not going to be able to be defensive you know to do confessional community we can't be defensive either if someone comes and says right. hey this is how i've been wrong this is how i've been hurt we need to be able to receive it and you know as i one of the things i try to do all the time is remember and, and coming back to prayer i pray God, help me to grow in unity with this person. Help me to grow in love with this person, to see them and value them the way you love them, Jesus. And to remember that all of this is, this confession, if, I'm, if I have to have a difficult conversation, is because the goal is to pursue unity and restoration with the person. And that helps me posture my heart to remember, unity is my goal. So when someone says, hey, this is how you've wronged me, it may sting to my core. But that's good because my heart needs humbled and I need to enter into that, not with defensiveness, but to say, man, if I've wronged you, now I have confession to do. But um, this is for the purposes of us being able to be restored to each other. And the crazy thing about that is in that healing and in that restoration as it happens, our relationships are stronger on the other side. And I think there's a spiritual block that the enemy would have us not confess, not talk, hold grudges, uh, cancel one another, just say, you know what, they're wrong, where this is the end of our relationship because it it cuts off spiritual community and the devil knows on the other side of confession is a stronger church, stronger friendships, stronger families, healthier, healthier lives, truer identities. And there's a spiritual block seeking to stop us from it. And we, we need to press forward knowing that there's a life and a healing on the other side of it. Yeah. And I think this just popped in my head and we'll give you the last word, Jeff. Um, Oftentimes, we think of confession, I know I do, I should just say me, as uh, just with those who I get along with or those who are my friends, maybe even those who are I like, um, that, that's, that's a little bit easier to do. It's not easy, but it's a little bit easier to do. But I think that confession is tethered uniquely and explicitly to the great commandment that Jesus gives to love one another as you love yourself, to love your neighbor, Mm. to love your neighbor. Um, And oftentimes, sometimes I should say, our neighbor is somebody who's my enemy. And so that might be a different talk for another time, but um, (laughs) that's when it gets really into the nitty gritty. Um, And so anyway, I thought I'd I'd mention that, uh, that confession isn't just for, but you know the person that you like or the person that um, you're around all the time that you work with, but it, but it can also be for the person that is your enemy. Um, anyway, I'm just going to drop that bomb and leave it there, but you get the last word, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I would just, um, I would encourage us to look at Luke, Luke chapter four 
of the temptation of Jesus and just walk through those areas because uh, the devil is not um, a creator. He's a duplicator. He's, he's, he tempted Eve the same way uh, that he tempts us today, and that's to question the goodness of God. And so with that being said, how can we examine our hearts um, through the lens of Scripture to say, God, what are areas of my life that don't resemble you, um, that aren't shining bright? And let con- confession be a tool and a support for our faith in our journey with the Lord, um, not a dead ritual. Because if we're just going to, if it's just about the dead ritual, then it won't produce spiritual fruit. But if it's with the right motivation, again, that God, I want to be more like you. I want to resemble Jesus in the way that I walk, in the way that I live, um, and in the internal realities of my heart and mind and thoughts. And um, confession is a beautiful way to help accomplish that and a beautiful way to, again, point us back to the power of the gospel that it's the good news of Jesus' life and death and resurrection and ascension and just submitting to his kingship. That's a good good. word. Thanks Thanks, thanks so much for bringing this topic to the table. Um, I felt while you were talking for those listening, the Holy Spirit just prompted me um, to, as you're seeking to start confessional community, or maybe there's someone, you know, you need to confess to, um, use this episode as a tool. Sometimes we need to send stuff before us. And so, um, maybe ask a friend, Hey, will you listen to this episode? And then I need, I need to have a conversation with you, um, on the other side or pastors, introduce it to your, your church, introduce it to your, your leadership teams, um, students and, and, and teenagers and young adults, bring this to your small group and your group of friends. And you can use this as a tool to start talking about confessional community and having that discussion of how you guys can bring that to each other. And that's really our hope. Yeah. You know, Khalil and I, we love to have these conversations, not just with one another, but with our, our groups of influence as well. And we really do want this podcast to be a resource and a help. Whether you're following Jesus or not, we want it to be a resource and a help. So thanks for coming to the table with us. Jeff, thank you so much, man. We're just so blessed by you. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. It's a great conversation. Love you guys. And friends, feel free to hit that subscribe button to be a part of the journey going forward. A rating and a review, again, means the world to us and helps us just continue to get better and 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 meet you guys in ways that, that's meaningful and matters. And that's our heart, like Sean just said. So until our next episode, have a great week. Have a great month. Um, invite someone to your table and pursue that confessional community and Christ-likeness. Thank you.